Jason Renner here. I've heard that there are people that are afraid of lobsters, and I have no idea why that could be. So, I've enlisted my friend Mike at the Seacoast Science Center to tell me why he thinks they might be a little scary to some people. Hey, Hello. Mike. So, they might look a little scary. Um, people are typically afraid of those big pinching claws that they have on their front. Right there. They're pretty big. They are. <laughs> But if you uh, really get time to learn about the lobster, you'll find that they're more cool than scary. So we do find lobsters right out front on our rocky shore when we go tide pool. And usually those are juveniles. So they're only about that big. Now they can still pinch you. So you still have to be careful, but feel free to take a look out there. Now, with, now a lobster this size, if we had the bands off, would they chop your finger off, would it just be a pinch? What is the strength of a lobster like that? I've found that I always underestimate the strength of crustaceans. <laughs> um, so a lobster this size, if it were to get a good grip on you with that crusher claw, it could probably do some damage, um, maybe a fractured bone. Um, it's really hard to say exactly, but you, you don't want to get pinched. <laughs> what are they typically using them for? So usually, while they do use them for defense when they're getting picked up by people, um, typically they use them to hunt. So lobsters have long been thought to be scavengers, eating mostly detritus at the bottom. But in fact, they prefer to hunt live prey. So they'll use those claws to crush mussel shells, crab shells, if they have to, other lobster shells. Um, and then they take their other cutter claw, which is a lot sharper and smaller. You'll see that there, that difference. Um, Okay. Yep, and they use that to really take the meat apart of <laughs> their prey. Excellent. Um, so they are they are predators, and they do prefer to hunt live prey. Excellent. Now, how do they eat? So they, it's pretty interesting. Um, once they hunt and, and actually get their prey, they'll, like I said, crush their that shell open with this claw. It has some motion there, um, and cut it up. And they actually have these mouth parts here, and they sort of grind that food together right in the middle here. Okay. Um, and as they eat, they also have what's basically teeth in their stomach. So they have this sort of bizarre way of digesting their food. But pretty interesting. Excellent. Teeth in their stomach. Now, I noticed this guy is what I would consider a regular colored lobster with sort of the, the brownish, reddish. But then I'm noticing a lot of blue. How does that happen? So that could happen because uh, of two different reasons. Oftentimes, lobster shells will turn blue uh, because of their diet, because they'll eat blue mussels and other, other um, foods that really promote that blue pigment in their shell. But usually, um, a normal lobster has a few different types of pigments in the shell. Usually it's genetics. If you see like a really bright blue lobster or an orange lobster, which, uh, which we actually have right at the Science Center, and we usually take those out to do our uh, visitor programs most days of the week. Excellent. Um, but yeah, that's usually a genetic thing that causes other pigments to not appear in the shell and just leaving one, blue, orange, or a couple, um, which would lead to a calico pattern, which, uh, which creates that sort of rare lobster that you lobstermen love to find and, and uh, show to people. Now how about these antennae? How are they using them? So these, these antennae right here, these long ones that we see, are used mostly for their uh, their sense of, of touch, so it helps them helps them move around um, because lobsters are mostly nocturnal, so they don't have sunlight to help them uh, see. They want to feel around. They'll feel around for prey, for shelter, for other lobsters. They also have these a pair of smaller antenna, um, which is actually their chemoreceptor, their primary chemoreceptor, which means that that's how they smell. So that smaller pair of antenna are uh, basically their nose. Interesting. Well, I have learned a ton about lobsters today, and I know that we've just started to talk about them. Yes. So um, I think I'm going to sit in on one of your visitor programs one of these days because Sounds there's good. a lot more to learn, I oh, know. Yeah. Um, so mm -hmm. if you want to learn more about lobsters at the Seaco Science Center, almost every day there is a lobster program. So check our website at seacoastsciencecenter.org to learn more. Gotta run!